some of the preliminary work was in starting to understand the language that people use to talk about wood heat. Talking to loggers, um, talking to people who, who burn with wood, there's, there's a particular sort of um, language that you that need to know to, um, to really understand what they're talking about and also to be able to have articulate conversations. Some of the first stuff we did was driving around and, and talking to various people who we thought might be interested, like, oh, we pass a shingle maker, oh, we pass a, a chainsaw salesman. The early conversations, a lot of times people can be like, you don't have any idea what we're talking about, do you? You, you, don't, you don't know a thing about cutting firewood. And, and it was true, but, but throughout the process we became more educated, starting to understand really what is involved in, in cutting for firewood, what sorts of machinery is used, what the, the organizational structure of the, the logging companies looks like, what people need to do, how the entire lives need to be set up in order to, to use firewood for heating, because it's, it, it requires a lot more intimate contact with the heat source. The, the next part of the project was going around and conducting household interviews. And we were looking at how many people really, really did burn wood for heat in Hancock County. The, the census data came out uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, saying that only 10% of people in, in the county burn, um, burn firewood for the heat. And, and we wanted to see if that was true. Um, we had a hunch that that wasn't true, that that was awful low. Um, and so we were looking at really how many people um, burn wood for heating, how, how people heat their homes overall, what, the, what the, the difference spread was. Is it that people only use wood and only use oil? Do people use a mix of them? Are people using other kinds of alternative energy? We were looking at, if they do burn wood, how much do they burn? Because um, that says a lot. And, and people, there's a wide range of um, people who have really tight insulated houses. Maybe they're using one of those old Russian stoves with a, this incredible thermal mass they'll burn. Two quarts a winter, some people have these drafty old farmhouses that are burning 10, 11 quarts a year. We were also looking at, at where they get their wood from so we could get a, a picture of the flow of wood through what we come to call the woodshed, sort of like a watershed. Where are the pieces of wood coming from that people put in their stoves? And, and who touches it? What hands are touching it? Are people cutting it themselves? Um, are they going to loggers? Or they just call up a company and have it, have it dumped in their yard? We also looked at what people care about the most, what, what their biggest concerns are, what they're looking for. Is it, is it cost? Is it efficiency? Is it complying with insurance? And, and a lot of what we were trying to do was get the actual language that people, people use to talk about these things. Um, because it's not, it's not just data, it's this rich experience that people have. Um, the context is of the utmost importance. We also looked at if people thought that more homeowners should be burning firewood, and if they did, why, or if they didn't, why not? Presumably, in the forest, a, a tree would grow, sequester carbon from the atmosphere, and when it would die, it would be released again. If we cut the tree before its, its natural death and, and burn it, and then the carbon dioxide goes um, up into the atmosphere and is again sequestered by, um, by the forest if we keep them continual forest. That could mean a lot for combating climate change instead of burning fossil fuels that are adding new carbon to the carbon cycle. This is, this is keeping the carbon that's already there, that's already cycling, cycling, maybe cycling it faster or in a different way, but it's not adding anything new. And also if forests are being managed for firewood, it could mean a lot for forest health. The way the majority of forests are managed in Hancock County and in Maine are their industrial forests for, for pulp, for paper, um, and more of a diversity in the forest management style um, could certainly lead to more, um, more care with which the forests are, are treated, um, more diversity for wildlife, um, as well as changing the, the scheme of the, the economics behind it if you're, if you're working with these enormous plantations of softwoods for pulp and, and you're paid per tree or per um, board foot or whatever for, for the pulp, then you, then you cut it really hard and you cut it really fast. Um, but if you're, if you're managing your selective cutting for firewood, then, then it's, it's, it's more of a um, high-end thing, you know, slightly more high, um, 
slightly more, slightly more valuable. It could be better for local economies. Instead of sending your money off to these gigantic uh, fuel corporations um, to, to provide you with your heat for the winter, your, your number two heating oil, you pay a, a local logger maybe from your town, maybe from a few towns away, and the money stays within the economy, it stays circulating within the economy, um, and, and builds better economies overall. Community building, that, that this sort of project could lead to more um, community strength. You see with Steve's community forest project, getting neighbors talking with each other about how they view their forests, maybe towards the end of managing it for firewood, it could really create this sort of strength and the sense of place that seems so important, especially facing hard times, especially facing um, um, enormous prices for oil, oil, oil running out, oil stopping coming to this state. Oil is not a sustainable resource that it's running out, that it's going to become more and more expensive. People are going to have trouble buying oil and heating their homes with it in the future, and something has to be done. Um, and that firewood heat is a great alternative for the reasons that we that I already mentioned. Through the ethnographic portion, we found that a lot of people do um, burn with firewood a lot more than we had supposed. We found that that burning wood wouldn't add too many dangerous pollutants to the air. If 75, 80 percent of the residents of Hancock County burned firewood, you know, assuming that they that they burned efficiently and that they burned good dry wood. We found that neighbors are oftentimes eager to talk with each other and and to get communicating around around these sorts of issues. We found that people really care about how they heat their homes. That's something thought about a lot. Just about everyone's concerned about about oil in one way or another. It becoming more expensive. It, becoming scarce, the, the dirty and impersonal and corporate system attached to importing enormous amounts of foreign oil generally um, is a pretty uncomfortable thing for, for folks that we talk to and that in a lot of cases people are, are eager to, to shift or are really excited about how they already, you know, people excited about how they burn wood. Um, there's a lot of pride surrounding that. And several people that we talk to would like to burn wood, but maybe can't, or used to burn wood, but are maybe too old now. And we found that a lot of people um, have come to expect universal, ubiquitous uh, heat throughout their house. We've, we've come to understand that there's a lot of knowledge about, about the forests. The people in Hancock County are really in tune with the forests. There's a lot of knowledge about forestry. There's a lot of knowledge about what it means to heat responsibly. As the research continues, we're interested in, in really in getting a better handle on who is in Hancock County, who is um, who's burning wood, um, how they relate to the forest, how they talk about the forest, how they talk about wood heat, um, and getting trying to get a really rich understanding of that so that we can have, have social change programs take place, or social support programs. Um, and that's going to be done with in-depth interviews, it, not just the, the regular five question survey that we have around the county as preliminary data, but, but something really, um, really, really rich and meaty. Um, and that, that, that will be able to tell us a lot. Something that I'm working on is a history piece of the county. How was, how have the forests traditionally been used? Um, what's the history of land use here from um, pre-colonial times um, through various technological innovations? You know, um, what changed in the forest when, when chainsaws came around? How about those, those lime kilns that were down in Camden? You know, from people cutting down trees and sending them all down there from this area? Um, what were the different different land management regimes, the land, land ownership regimes, was it all? Uh, when, when did it become this patchwork of private ownership? Um, who, was, who was owning it previously and what did they do with it? And, and that will give us a rich understanding of, of the force that we're dealing with 
of what we can expect in the forest and also of the, the culture. Where the, the wood heating culture came from, what, what sort of innovations are happening today that, that change the dynamic. Then it can also be really useful for the community forest project because it's interesting. If we can, if we can tell people what their forest looks like now, what it looked like um, 200 years ago to the present, what it'll presumably look like in the future, given different kinds of management options. It can be a real draw for people to participate and also, also open them up and think about the options. I'm really interested in addressing concerns that people had. One of the questions on the, on the interview was, do you think keening with wood should be encouraged or discouraged? And a lot of people said, yes, but, but with conditions. People have to have to be able to burn it safely. We don't, we don't want lots of fires, like house fires, neighborhood fires. Um, or it's got to be efficient if it's sending up all kinds of pollution to the atmosphere. It's, people shouldn't be burning more of it. And, and the same sort of thing, whoever said no, I think it should be discouraged. What are, what are the reasons for that? And then and addressing them, um, creating, creating an information hub for people who burn wood or thinking about burning wood, creating videos, uh, essays, what have you. A really important piece of the social change is letting people know that a lot of people do burn wood, that it's a, a very prevalent practice and it's important in a lot of ways and, and supporting that in, in whatever capacity we can with our, our informational campaign. I, I want to set up Hancock County to make the transition off of oil seamless. Guaranteed supply and plan for, for fire for everybody heating their homes with firewood. And that it, it can be done in a way that, that people feel empowered to burn with firewood. That it can be something that is, that is really, that's enjoyed, that's sexy. Like I want to make, make burn with firewood sexy all over this county. I want to see forests uh, managed in a really responsible way, in an ecologically responsible way. And I want to see the capacity for, for um, neighborhoods to manage their forests, um, that, that you don't have, have just this, this option between really big, enormous machines for huge land areas and individuals with chainsaws for just their personal use, having, having a broader diversity of, of harvesting. Um, have harvesting capacity available. I want to see neighbors communicating about their firewood, about having 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 firewood be seen as a group thing, as as something that that everybody's participating in. It's not just something that you you as an individual call up your um, gas supplier to come and bring you. That it's that it's something that is of community concern. And that everyone makes sure everyone has enough firewood. I want to see extreme resiliency within the county. I want to see everyone off of corporate, corporate delivered energy resources from thousands and thousands of miles away. I want to see it all be much more local and as individuals, as community groups, as small companies. That there isn't a worry about if you'll be able to afford to heat your home next winter. I want to see an end to people having to make sacrifices between being able to feed their family well and being able to heat their homes. Have something really solid. Have heating be a, a basic resource for everyone, that everyone has it accessible. And it's really good that there's, a, there's an abundant supply of firewood for everyone and, and, and people who are involved in processing and delivery and cutting can, 